If the Prophet Muhammad told us to do something inside our life, he said, do this inside your life, we should take it on face value. And the second point, if you study all of his words, you find something very, very remarkable. Even when he begins to talk about paradise, if he mentions any for the person, Adman lahu fil jannah, I guarantee for the person inside jannah, wajibat lahu jannah, is it compulsory for him to enter paradise, ghuri sat lahu fil jannah, something is planted from inside paradise, he will be given this in paradise, this will be given to him in paradise. Guess what? Study those ahadith in detail. All of them talk about what? About actions. Go and study them. You do this action, you get this in paradise. You make this dhikr, you get this in paradise. You do this, this, you get this in paradise. All of them have to do with action. So the whole of our discussion has been when people just say, oh, paradise will be given to me. Imam al Hassan al Basri mentioned, they said, Iman bi tamanni. Iman isn't just tamanni, I hope. That's it, I hope, and that's it, just sit there. You know, like now you sit there and you're feeling hungry, you want food to come in your belly. Is it going to come there? You have to make some juhud. You have to make some struggle. You have to go there and you buy the food, cook the food, whatever it may be. If a person just sits there and you I want to have children, they don't get married. Or I want to earn money, just sit there. Are you going to earn money? You have to do something. So now, why do you think that paradise is something cheap? Why is that option in mind that we think paradise is cheap? You know what? I don't need to do anything. If I want to wear a nice Rolex watch, what do I have to do? I have to save up my money and buy it, isn't it? Okay, should I just go Robin Steel? Can I go Robin Steel paradise and enter the paradise? But that's what some of us think, you know what, no problem, I'll just stroll into paradise. And this is an example I always say to everyone. Because a lot of our people, we get very emotional. You know, when we, when we die, just read the Quran for me. You know, ignore whether it's right or it's wrong, okay? Just understand this, okay? We're simple Muslims. You know, excuse the expression. You know what, we're wasting our time. You know, us praying five times a day, banging our heads on the floor, excuse the expression. We're wasting our time. Because the richest person in Newham can come now and say, you know, when I die, I'll give each one of you brothers a thousand pounds. I'll give each one of you a thousand pounds and read the Quran for me. Is this person going to go to paradise? Yes or no? No. Simple answer, isn't it? So why are we always so bent on thinking that if I die, people read Quran, I go to paradise? Simple, isn't it? It don't need to be complicated in your life. It's such a simple understanding. The person can do whatever they want to do in their life and just say to the people, read the Quran for me. I'm on my way to paradise. So we're wasting our life, aren't we? And I've been inside the madrasa where people, there's 20 Qur'ans ready, which have been read. They say, look, we need another 10 more Qur'ans by the end of the day. No problem. No, 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 no. 10 Qur'ans read in 4 hours. Can you read 10 Qur'ans in 4 hours? No. But we read 30 Qur'ans, and now we're going to give that reward to who? The person who died. This is what exists. Correct me if I'm wrong. I was in the madrasa. I know. I saw it in my own life. Kids are flicking pages, jumping pages, jumping to this jewels, fighting, arguing, talking, and and next people, the family will come and say, "Here, we've read thirty Qurans for you. Transfer this reward to them. It's like a bank system. Put it in his bank account. He's going to jannah." <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Have you got any guarantees going to jannah? No. Finish. That's it. Did the Prophet or some ever say to his companions that look, when somebody does read the Quran and transfer the reward for him? The Quran says what? Shahr Ramadan and Levi Unzila feel Quran. Hudan lin nas. He said that Ramadan is the month of the Quran. We sent for who? Hudan lin nas. Guidance for mankind. Not lin mayyitin, not for the dead people. Allah. Guidance for who? Living people. Take the guidance of the Quran, live it inside your life, implement it inside your life. Live according to the Quran, you'll be successful. That's it. We don't need people. We don't need intermediaries. We don't need people to push us into paradise. Each one of us on their judgment will come how? Further will come on our own. You can't blame this person, blame that person, blame him, blame me. When you get to an age of ability, all of us are responsible for who? For our own selves. That's it. All of us are responsible. Many of us, we come to this country, we came poor, we came as illegal immigrants or whatever it may be. We have to work our way, isn't it? To make something of our life. Now when it comes to Islam, we don't need to do anything. We don't need to do anything inside our lives. Because you know why? We've already made it to paradise. This is a dangerous belief, brothers. It's a danger, very, very dangerous belief that if many of our Muslims believe this, it's a dangerous belief. Obviously, as we're concluding and highlighting, yes, Allah subhanahu will forgive and will pardon and will wipe out the mistakes of many people. There's no doubt upon that. But for us to be instilling this type of belief inside our society is something very, very dangerous. Asking the question that the hadith about the Prophet mentioned that 
either Murtha ibn Adam, son of Adam, dies, all of his actions come to a standstill except for three. Uh, either we find Walid ibn Salih here, the ulahu, a righteous son that play, uh, prays for the, for, the, for the individual, or that we find the ilmun and tafu' bihi, knowledge that people get to benefit from, or some form of ongoing charity. So here, what does it mean, ongoing charity? Here the ulama have described ongoing charity is the building of a well, the building of a masjid, the building of an orphanage, the fixing of a road, the building of an hospital, things that people benefit by. There has been no codification that the child reads Quran, and it will be safer the child, you're saying it's right if you answered it yourself. If the person is praying, then when they come to every single prayer, what do they say inside the shahud? رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَى رَبَّنَا فِلِّي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ If your children are praying, they're praying for you. Why are you worried for? Why should a person be worried? If you know your, your children are righteous, every time they make the shahud, they're prayed for you. But most of these people, their children are not righteous because they purchase the imams, they purchase the people, they give them money, they give them gifts and tell them to make dua. Now if you love your parents, why do you need me to come and make dua for you? You may think I'm a righteous person, but I just may just come and do it because I get 50 pounds, I get 100 pounds, I get 500 pounds, okay, good day, I get 1,000 pounds. You as a son, you as a daughter, when you make dua for your parents, whose dua goes to Allah? My dua or your dua? Whose dua goes to Allah quicker? Whether you're a bad Muslim or good Muslim is irrelevant. That's your father, that's your mother. When you stand there and you shed tears, you think, you know, Allah forgive my father, forgive my mother. And they oppressed, they never obeyed you. Pardon them, open their grave, put light inside their grave, pardon their sins. So why do you need me for? Why do you need me for? Why do you need a masjid for? Why do you need the people for? Because why is all an industry to create that feeling amongst the people? We are illiterate. You're not illiterate. When you pray to Allah, you're not illiterate. Allah responds to everybody's dua. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Allah says, call upon me, I'll respond your call. He doesn't say, tell someone to make dua for you. <coughs> so reading the Quran, if your children read it, Alhamdulillah, it's good. It benefits them. They become good Muslims. They pray for you. You don't have to think that if they read the Quran, that now they can say, give this, give this reward to my parents. There's no concrete proof of that, of that. And this hadith is a contradiction in itself. The hadith is talking about ongoing charitable actions. To, to make this hadith, to explain the hadith, it talks about reading the Quran that is not being proven. And even those ulama who allow reading the Quran, those minute amount of ulama who allow recitation of the Quran, they have still concluded, if you read their words in detail, they've still concluded and said, there is still no proof that you can encourage people to do that. That's the point we need to understand. If you want to do it, that's your choice. But they still concluded as well, there is no concrete proof. That's what we're trying to highlight, because too many of our people are becoming what? Reliant upon it. That's what I'm trying to instill within ourselves. If you want to do it, I'm not arguing with you. Or if you want to prove it from another hadith, or whatever it may be. What I'm trying to remind ourselves about, that most of our people are reliant, that we've done this and that's it. So for example, we all know what happens next. Once you do that, what happens next? You have to have the khatam. When most people come to khatam, what are they worried about? Oh, the food wasn't good. Isn't it? They're complaining about the food, they didn't do this, they didn't do that. What does the sunnah say? When somebody dies, who should cook? What's the sunnah? Who should cook for the person? The neighbors, thank you very much. Why, why should I be worried if somebody dies in my family? Why should I be running like a headless chicken about worried about who's going to eat food in my house? The sunnah says that my neighbor should cook the food. The sunnah says that my guests who are coming, my neighbor should take care of them. Why should I become bankrupt? Why should I be worried about the people? No girl person is going to be some. Isn't it? We worried about the people, isn't it? Look at our weddings. What do we worry about? What do we worry? Tell the truth. What do we worry about? What will people say? The people say oh, we never spent fifty thousand pound in our wedding. We never spent sixty thousand. We never gave kurinos a sona ni data. Isn't it? That's what we worry about. What does the sunnah say? Sunnah says pull the people to good food, give the least amount of dowry, and pray for them, give blessings for them. So the answer is simple. Because our life is always against the sunnah, then we try to turn it around and say, oh, but the sunnah allows us to do this. If you believe in the sunnah, live according to the sunnah. Live according to the sunnah to the best of your ability. And that will be a path of success for every single individual. And don't worry about what the people say. People come to my grave. I don't care one bit. I said that to my parents. I don't care one bit who comes to my grave. I'm not worried one bit. And any Muslim shouldn't be worried. Why should you be worried? Somebody didn't come to my grave. If you try to live your life to the best of your ability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take your good deeds and multiply them. And bring people to your grave as well. But more importantly, bring what? Bring people to follow those teachings.
Yes, we know it's highly recommended to go to whose grave? To the grave of the, the Prophet Muhammad <laughs> But what did he say? He said, Mata alqa ikhwani. When am I going to meet my brothers? He said, when am I going to meet my brothers? The companion said, that's not ikhwanak. The companion said, are we not your brothers? He said, no. Antum ashabi, you're my friends, you're my companions. The people, my friends, my brothers are who? He said, the brothers who I want to meet, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِي وَلَمْ رَأَوْنِي Are those who believed in me and never ever saw me in their life. What does that mean, brothers? What does that mean? That you go against your sunnah all day long and then you think you're going to meet who? Meet the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those who are going to meet him are those who hold fast to his sunnah inside his life to the best of their ability and teach people and remind that. So that's what we try to instill within ourselves. Remember that inside your life, hold fast to that and that will be inshallah a path in your success.